Hey everybody, welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. I'm Sam and I've got some very special guests with me for this segment. Ari and William from Team Cherry who are here to show us some of the new content that's coming for Hollow Knight. Thanks, Sam. Now, thank you so much for coming by. So this game is available on the eShop right now and I'm a huge fan of Hollow Knight. So I'm really excited that we can show folks a look at this is the new content pack that's going to be coming soon for Hollow Knight. So folks who have the game will be able to check this out soon. Yeah, that's right. So, um, obviously Hollow Knight has released and uh, Surprise. we're really excited about that. But uh, I think players now are getting to experience that for the first time themselves. We thought for Nintendo Treehouse Live, we'll bring a, a, a new segment that people uh, have, haven't seen yet. This is an upcoming content pack that we're going to release for free uh, in the coming months. It's called Hollow Knight Gods and Glory, and William's going to play through a little bit of that today. Fantastic. So as we're jumping into gameplay here, we should probably tell folks a little bit about what the game's about in general and then how this content pack fits into the storyline for Hollow Knight. Sure. So the, the content pack uh, is actually something that players can access at any time in their journey in Hollow Knight. Um, and it really it, and it, it presents a really different way for players to take on the game. So specifically, Gods and Glory which we'll be seeing more of here is, uh, is our take on a boss rush mode, which is a very common uh, so, uh, addition to the genre. And I think, oh, it's a co common mode in similar games in the genre. But we didn't want to just make a boss rush mode. We wanted to do it in our way. And what that meant was we wanted to integrate it completely into the game experience. We wanted to make sure there's a narrative in there. We wanted to make sure that it's it's all part of the knight's journey and it's not like a separate divided mode for them to play and i will say just coming back to the concept of genre here what i love about this game is honestly it feels like one of the truest representations of a metroidvania game that i've played in a really long time and that that's a, a genre of gameplay that i'm very emotionally invested in so this just feels so good not only mechanically with how you handle um, uh, the mechanics of movement and the navigation system and mapping and power-ups and all that kind of stuff, but you guys have really captured the mood for, for me of what really kind of makes a Metroidvania. It's very isolating, you feel very out of your depth, very scared sometimes as you're going into these spaces, but I think you've done a phenomenal job of really capturing that mood of what made the classic Metroids and Castlevania so great. Oh, thank you. I think, look, William and I both had a fantastic time making the game. Um, and we obviously, re we just really love the, the, the history of the genre. Um, so we just immersed ourselves as deeply as we could in it. And I think the real, the real thing that we were trying to capture with Hollow Knight uh, was that feeling of just being lost in this vast world and not, having, not even having a sense of how big it can possibly be. And then as like just exploring new areas, finding new secrets. And as you go, you just you just can't even feel the edges of the world you're in. It feels like this this massive labyrinth. And then, of course, towards the end of the game, learning about like once you've learnt the world, getting that feeling of mastery over the labyrinth and really feeling like this is a place that you know intimately. On that front, I really love the choice that you guys made to make the mapping system something that you really don't even get access to until fairly later on in the game. So when you get started, you're exploring these really interesting, intricate subterranean labyrinths. You don't have a map. If you want a map, you got to find the person who's got a map. you got to buy it. If you want to know where you are on the map, that's another item that you've got to pick up. So you spend a while when you're first jumping into the game really feeling like you don't have a good sense of like, OK, where am I? And it really adds to the creepiness as you're exploring space. Yeah, we, we really love that, that feeling of being lost in that space and of, of, of you having to find your own way rather than to, to just rely on a guide that is given to you and really learn the, the space intimately. Um, but there, is, there are maps and of course at some point you really do need to get that map. And you're so, so happy once just, you've got yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> we just want to make sure that when people, people do find those aids, they really feel like that's a valuable thing that they've found and that's a discovery in itself. So to speak to that a little bit further, can we talk a little bit more about the upgrade system and the different kind of things that you'll collect over the course of your journey? Yeah, absolutely we can. Um, so the knight, in similar to the other games of the Metroidvania uh, genre, gets traditional power-ups, movement abilities, um, and then it, you also get a full suite of customizing uh, 
sort of twists called, these, these are called charms, and you equip them, uh, and they have various effects on gameplay. They can, they can sort of change a spell that the knights had uh, that's previously acquired, or they can uh, be an aid to collecting Geo, the money in the world, or they can sort of transform your movement abilities. There's a really interesting strategic element there as well, especially when you first start out, because you've got a very limited number of slots for charms. So once you do find charms or you find a vendor that's going to sell charms to you, you have to make a really thoughtful choice about, okay, I, I can't have all of these on right now. Which ones am I going to pick? You can over charm if you're feeling bold, but that seems like a, a risky prospect. Yes, you, you, you can do that. Uh, that's probably a very advanced move that I won't spoil too much about, but. Yeah, there, there, is, there is a very dangerous way to go beyond the intended limit of charms. High risk, high reward exactly. kind of option for folks who are interested. So in a beautiful space here, God Home, can we touch really quickly just on the HUD elements for folks who aren't familiar with the Hollow Knight? We can. So uh, William's actually heading into one of the, the new areas right now, and this is God Home, which is sort of a, a, a hub of our uh, Gods and Glory content. And he's actually about to enter one of the, big, the challenges. And, the, the HUD elements you can see up there represent fairly common uh, elements of the genre, specifically the health, what it was his, uh, with, with the little mask shards. Um, we should talk a little bit about yes. bindings here. As very, that, that is a good point. So very quickly, William's actually got some optional challenges that are available to him in the challenge he's about to, to undertake. So he can make it even harder on himself if he wants to get that extra reward. Not today, though. But not today. He's already. I should say, just before William gets right into it, and he clearly is, he's act, he is actually undertaking quite a difficult challenge. So, if he seems very focused, uh, I think you'll soon understand. That's fair. Why. We won't expect much talking out of him just yet. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, the one other element of the HUD that I should briefly touch on is this: the large liquidy soul meter on the on the left there, and that and that is that's the resource that the knight collects throughout the journey and that allows you to cast spells like William's doing right now and also heal yourself as you're going along and and as you get more adept at collecting soul you can you can really uh, extend your journey by constantly healing by feeling keeping healthy and it's another way that as you as you gain understanding of the world you can also feel uh, much more in control of the space I'd love to talk a little bit about the art style as well. One of the things I love about how you executed this game was it's got this beautiful painterly hand-drawn style and you treated the NPCs and the enemy characters in very similar ways. So there's really no differentiator when you come up to a character to say, okay, is this an enemy or is this going to be somebody who maybe has an item for me or some advice? And I found as I play Hollow Knight, it makes me incredibly nervous. There have been times where I've come into a cavern, I see a character, and I just back myself back out of there again, and I'm not sure I want to actually talk to them yet just to find out, okay, this person, maybe they're going to attack me, maybe they're going to be great. But it's a really great choice that kind of leaves you kind of staying on the edge of your seat as well, just with any character that you meet in the world. Yeah, that, that, that edge of your seat, that uncertainty is something that we really love, especially in all games, but there's certainly it's something we try to capture again in Hollow Knight. Um, and obviously, if you're an adventurer in a, in a dangerous kingdom, that would, that would be the feeling that you'd be experiencing, this on your edge, not, not sure of, of who is a friend or a foe. And in fact, the, the enemy that William's fighting right now, the Dung Defender, who's a bit of a beloved boss character from the game, fits that really well in that he, he, he appears somewhat of a, of, a, of, of a dangerous foe at the start, but that relationship can twist throughout the story. Yeah, one of my favorites, and I, I won't say too much about them, but there's a certain little mining bug who turns up fairly early on, who's got a little pickaxe and say, is humming this really creepy, adorable little song, and yeah, one yeah, of my she, favorites. She, yeah, she she, uh, she was also a bit of a favorite, and I think we really tried to have a lot of fun with the uh, the voice acting in this game, and she, and I think like just the little creepy singing loop that we managed to get out of her was something that people really attached to. She has a, I will say, a slightly morbid tale throughout the just story. But yeah, I w <laughs> yeah, I won't go into the details too much. And we had great fun actually doing all the voices for the characters alongside Myla, the, uh, the mining bug. And William actually did the voice for the Dung Defender, who, <laughs> who uh, that was a listeners on the stream may be able to, to hear. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, in fact, William did I'll probably... I'll just do it now. Doma, 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 There you go, with a recreation right there. And now he's facing the Moss Charger, which is which is another boss that you can encounter, actually, like, at an early point in the game. And one thing that Gods and Glory gives us is, is a chance to really make some of these characters that 
weren't such major bosses in the in the core game get a lot more focus and a lot more attention um, and you can face them in much more challenging ways based on things like bindings and some other things that we haven't revealed just yet. And with this content pack, you're also adding some new music as well, because I know the music is something that Hollow Knight is really known for. It's really beautiful and atmospheric. Can you tell us a little bit more about the new track? Yes, uh, so, so all, the, all the music in the game is done by this fantastic composer, Christopher Larkin, who's a great friend of ours. Um, and he composed so many tracks for, for the game. And then for Gods and Glory, he's just gone all out. He's given us this full suite of tracks to encompass the, the God Home area and some of the other little bits that we're adding to the game that I won't spoil just yet. But he's also done remixes of some fan favorite tracks. And actually, the Hornet track that is playing right now is one of those remixes. Uh, and then there are a few other bosses that have also received remixes that I won't say exactly who, but He's done an outstanding job. Yeah, Hornet's a fantastic character as well that you encounter a few times over the course of your adventure. Yeah, she's, she's also been a really picked up uh, by the fans and seems really beloved. And, and we think she's one of the fantastic characters. She's, she's a character that you actually encounter all throughout your journey in Hollow Knight. And she has her own tale that is going on across it all. You can just get little little touches of that. And through, through that all, again, your relationship with her can change. Uh, whether she's a friend or a foe at different points is, I won't spoil, but, uh, but we, think we, we, we do think that at, at the heart there's a really interesting story to her as well. Um, and it's probably just part of that philosophy that we, all the characters we create, we really love those characters and we really want to um, get into them and find out what they're about and try and give players, obviously, ways of, of digging into those characters as well and finding out more about them. Yeah, it is a story that comes across very organically as you're exploring, so it's not something where you're suddenly, oh yeah, I know exactly what's going on in this world, I've got a total sense of you know, what's going on, how things are operating. You really piece it together bit by bit as you're exploring, and it's really interesting how your view of the world and the creatures in the world changes and evolves as you become gradually uh, to have a greater understanding of what exactly has been happening here. Yeah, we, we tried to be quite subtle with the way the story unfolds in Hollow Knight because it's this, it's this vast underground bug kingdom uh, that, that is, it's so mysterious that we really wanted players to, to uncover the narrative that is in there at their own pace. And, we wanted, and, and what that means is that some players may, may not actually have that interest. They may be more interested in the, in the challenge or some of the boss fights or some of the, um, just some of the vistas that they, that they can explore and see. Tackle the and th but then other players can really dig in and they can really find that there is this vast history in the world and the, actually like your your character's involvement in that history and obviously the way that you can change the world throughout the, the course of the game. It, it, it's a fantastic game. I, I'm so glad that we've got it on Nintendo Switch now. This is, a, I think, the console debut for Hollow Knight and all of the content packs that you've released so far are included as well. So folks who pick it up at the Nintendo eShop are going to be able to check out all the content packs that are out already and then get this new one when it goes live. Yeah, actually, I should I should point out. Yes, so this will be coming very soon. Uh, you can see William is actually now fighting the final, quite difficult boss, and this is this is a character that people may recognise from the from Hollow Knight, the game. This is this is the Paint Master. Uh, he's he's formerly a blade wielder, and he's given it up uh, for his brush, and he's actually become far more lethal in the process. Uh, and I think. We had, a, we had a great time certainly creating this boss and he, he obviously makes a huge mess of the arena as, uh, as you battle him. He, he also provides quite a challenge. You need to be very, very focused on William right now, it seems. Mind it. So another mechanic right that we're seeing it. here, so William was very low on soul there, but as he's inflicting damage on an enemy, he's recovering soul and there again spending it to heal. A really interesting mechanic there as far as really encouraging a certain level of aggressive gameplay just to make sure that you're able to refill soul. There, there's some other ways to gather it back, but you don't want to have that little jar empty for too yeah, long. Yeah, there's a real risk reward play in, in the whole combat system of, of Hollow Knight where you, you really do, getting in and getting those hits in on enemies can really give you a benefit. Time for I think a rest. What, yeah, done. what William's going to do after that is uh, take a moment to rest. Didn't it's break a, a sweat. Space. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to settle on the aesthetic direction? Because it seems like here you've got a pretty cohesive vision that you realized, but 
I imagine it took a little bit to figure out, okay, what exactly is this game going to look like when we're it, getting it, in there? Yeah, it's a good question. I think for William and I, it, the game actually started as a game jam, so it was quite a, um, initially a very quick process to try and get a game together in, in 72 hours. And what that meant was... Keeping it we, simple. Keeping it really simple. Was the and first thought bugs? <laughs> It actually was, and the reason bug, I think it's just that you think about bugs, they're, they're small, and you can draw them as a little oval with maybe a few lines on it, and you have a bug. And for us, that's perfect, and pretty much that's what we did, um, just to a larger scale. But it, it was that simplicity that allowed us to really expand and make this vast land that became Hollow Knight. And I, I think, think so. it also let us have the energy uh, to go through it all, and it felt very light and fun to make, and hopefully that shows. Yeah, really enduring characters as well. I, I'm going to try not to gush too much about this game, but yes. Uh, so, folks are watching again. That was Hollow Knight, which is available on the Nintendo Switch eShop right now. So, I would highly encourage you to check it out. If you're a Metroidvania fan, this one is an excellent choice. Uh, guys, before we wrap up, are there any final words that you want to share with fans, folks who are watching? Yeah, well, I think, I think we just want to say thank you to Nintendo for allowing it to come out in this, this wonderful way. And thank you to all the fans who have already been picking it up on Nintendo Switch. Um, we're really delighted to see everyone getting into it and having a fantastic time. There's so much game there for you to just lose yourself in, and hopefully you do. Uh, there's a lot. There is some challenge in there, but we think that the per to persevere through it, there's really reward that is worth it. Yeah, and we're really, really looking forward to meeting a whole bunch of new people in the community. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys again so much for coming and hanging out and showing us this new content that will be coming soon for Hollow Knight. Folks watching, thanks so much for hanging out with us here. And please don't go to our next. We've got some Splatoon 2 Octo expansion to show you. So we'll be right back in a few minutes.